Madam Speaker, Alison Johnston, Member of Parliament from all over the world, Excellencies, Vice President Al Gore, Lawrence Tubania. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be speaking here in the Scottish Parliament. I thank GLOBE for this opportunity. I stand here today as an elected representative of one of the most vulnerable countries on earth. I do not just represent my constituents as a member of parliament or my parliament as its speaker or my nation as its former president. I also represents, represent the Climate Vulnerable Forum, a group of 55 most climate vulnerable development countries around the world. We include Bangladesh, the current chair, and the Philippines, Kenya, and many small states like my own. In total, we are 1.2 billion people, many of them among the poorest, who are in the front line of the current climate emergency. No point of ground in my country, the Maldives, is more than a couple of meters above the sea level. We are already seeing our coast erosion, eroding, as the seas rise and the waves eat away at more and more of our land. We are living in a planet of 1.2 degrees, heated above the Industrial Revolution. We now know that the winds are stronger, the waves are higher, the summers are longer, the rain is more, our coral reefs have bleached. We have lost our biodiversity. We have lost the bait fish and therefore our tuna fishery industry. Our water is contaminated and we have to desalinate our water. We are already seeing more impacts of climate change than many, 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 many generations have ever, ever seen in our countries. That is why COP26 is so important. Because as I said at the outset of the meeting, it represents our last hope of keeping 1.5 degree Paris goal alive. This goal of keeping temperatures from crossing 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels is essential if any of our corals are to survive in their natural state. It is essential if my nation is to stay above the sea level. And it is also essential if other nations of the Climate Vulnerable Forum are not to be similarly wiped off the face of the earth by drought or by fire or flood. So we are now five days into the COP. It seems like longer. I am mostly in the COP when I am not in prison, which is very often. So as a COP regular, let me take stock and share with you my thoughts about how things are going. I'm also not in COP when I am victim of an assassination attempt. When we came here, there was a mood of pessimism. We pushed back against that. Pessimism achieves nothing. 
Determination is the right attitude to have at the start of such an important gathering. And we have seen some encouraging outcomes already. Top of the list for me would be Prime Minister Modi's pledged pledge in the opening ceremony. He talked about five elixirs, and for us, they might very well be elixirs of life. India has said it will now have 50% of renewables and 500 gigawatts of clean energy by 2030. And when my friend, the Prime Minister of India, Prime Minister Modi says this, I believe him. I know he does not talk empty words. I now fully expect India to be in the lead of a global clean energy revolution. There is a revolution happening. We are on the brink of another technological industrial revolution, a green revolution. If you do not embrace the new technology, you cannot be the leaders of tomorrow. If you want to be burdened with the obsolete Victorian technology of the internal combustion engine, well, you can be part of the forgotten history. If you want to move forward, you have to be a leader and lead your people. The number crunchers have looked at this increased target for India and other pledges. And the 2.7 degrees that we expected when we came into COP has now been reduced to 1.9 degrees. If you add in the 0.3 degrees for the methane pledge, and perhaps some more for the agreement to stop deforestation, I think we are within sight of the 1.5 degree goal here in Glasgow. But there remains a gap, a gap between paper pledges and climate reality. According to the global carbon project, emissions have now fully rebounded from the small drop seen last year after the COVID. And coal has been in the lead. This is what matters in the real world. Coal is killing our countries. We must close the gap between ambition and reality. And that means delivering on the pledges we have heard. Net zero in 2050, 2060, 2070 is important. And I welcome these long-term commitments. They show that we will exit the fossil fuel age and that the clean energy revolution is already unstoppable. No one should be financing new fossil fuels. It is not just destroying the planet. It is a poor investment as well. World Bank, the IMF, the multilateral organizations, should not be lending money for fossil fuel investments. The bank should not come to the Maldives with a plan to have an LNG plant or a diesel generator. They show that we will, the long-term pledges show that we will exit the fossil fuel age and that the clean energy revolution is simply unstoppable. But we are running out of time. At current emission, the world will have burnt through the remaining carbon budget for 1.5 degrees in just 11 years. So it is short-term action that counts now. It is action now. It is immediate action that must, be, that must bend the curve for our survival. That is why we, the CVF, 
are calling for not just a regular COP outcome, but something that represents a radical departure from business as usual. We want to see a Glasgow Climate Emergency Pact. This would establish annual climate emergency ambition platforms for 2030, ambition at each COP between 2022 and 2025. This would be for enhancing ambition beyond just the NDCs, not every five years, but every year. Because in the climate emergency, every year counts, every month counts, every minute counts. We also need to focus on finance, because without a delivery plan for $500 billion by 2024, developing countries will lose faith and goodwill. The financing promises we made a long time ago, and they must be fulfilled by the end of COP26. Finance also must be split 50-50 between mitigation and adaptation, because our nations are already facing loss and damage for climate impacts every year. I am proud that the Maldives have put forward 2030 carbon neutral goal. We stand willing, but we can't do this alone. And there is, and this is where you as parliamentarians come in. Leaders have made a pledge. You as parliamentarians know how to deliver a pledge through legislations. We go out during elections, we pledge to the people. To realize that pledge, you need a legislative agenda. That will give you the procurement orders and the tender notices. And that is where parliaments come in. We must always remember that we answer to the people who elected us. I spent half my adult life in jail. I have the scars and too many of them to prove it. So let us make sure that parliaments and elected representatives are central to all the work we do on climate. It won't happen in any other place other than here. In the Maldives, as Speaker of the Maldives Parliament, I have encouraged the passage of the Climate Emergency Bill. That act prescribes a pathway to net zero in the Maldives. Like the flagship UK Act, it stipulates the establishment of a carbon budget for each calendar year in order to meet the 2030 goal. This makes our target legally binding and est establishes the mechanism for reaching it. This way, our parliament is bridging the gap between ambition and reality. We have legislated an emergency legis an energy legislation that would allow for power purchasing agreements and feed-in tariff systems. That would make us switch to renewables. That would give us the infrastructure to deliver solar panels and renewable power. We have enacted a Water and Sewerage Act that would again deliver safe water and regulations on how to dispose of your waste. We have amended 
the Environment Act to stop the import of plastics to the Maldives. I wish that other parliaments could lead in this way, not just in declaring climate emergencies, but in setting out in legislation how government must meet their promises. Maldives Parliament stand willing to assist any parliamentarians among you who wish to implement similar legislations. We are small, we are in the middle of the Indian Ocean and you can't probably find us on a map, but we know how to do this. We can get it done. We know how to deliver a pledge through legislations. We are quite willing to work with you. I am very happy that we have GLOBE as a partner. And I note that our act, despite all political differences on other issues, we actually fight in the parliament on other issues. We throw punches. But in this one, we all came together and it passed unanimously. Because if there is one thing we can agree on, it is our survival. I will not sign a suicide note for my nation and none of us will sign a suicide note for our world. Despite all our differences, we all know what the outcome must be. Let us unite and let us use the power of parliaments to deliver 1.5 degrees. Let us save this planet. We are the generation to do that. Thank you.